Can you believe it, guys? There's already been 2,023 seasons of League of Legends. And what a roller coaster of a year it's been. From one of the weakest starts imaginable to one of the strongest finishes, I'd say as a Riot Games fan, this year's been pretty good. Valorant, along with several new agents, cemented itself as an absolute juggernaut in the competitive shooter industry. This year's World Championships reached its highest peak viewership ever. TFT saw several new set releases, one of them being one of the best release sets to date. <laughs> 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 Project L continues to develop at a snail's pace, announcing Yasuo earlier this year. Riot Forge saw the release of several fantastic single-player experiences that expanded the world of Runeterra in meaningful, lore-accurate ways, and also Convergence was there. Legends of Runeterra saw some shakeups, introducing us to more exclusive champions and massive redesigns than ever before. Wild Rift dipped its toes into the arena, updating some of its own champions along the way. And Malphite finally got his long-awaited visual update in every single game and every single capacity besides his actual League of Legends model. But that's all side content. How was season 2023 or season 13 in League of Legends compared to the years prior? It was... Well, we saw the introduction of ranked splits, much to the dismay of casual players everywhere. Communication and ping spam was fixed, much to the dismay of competitive players everywhere. Nexus splits finally returned, and Arena launched as our first new game mode since Ultimate Spellbook, and spoiler alert, it's probably the best game mode they've ever made. Starter Pokemon were added into the jungle and quickly forgotten about, moral ethics were tossed out the window with the arrival of $200 chromas, and of course, the lore officially died. Color stories ceased development after the first champion release of the year, and Riot themselves confirmed they would never, ever return. Except, yeah, make sure to put out a color story for the painter champion. Hilarious! As for champions, miraculously, there were even less released this year than the last, dropping from 5 to 4, with Melio, Nefiri, Briar, and Huey. For ASUs, we got one with Ari. For the newly dubbed CGU, we got one with Aurelian Soul. And for VGUs, we got... Uh... Nothing. nothing. I mean, unless you count... Ugh, sup, fellas. Jerks! But hey, you know what we did get? Nearly 150 new skins this year. Biggest budget of all time for 2023, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, in all fairness, I don't know why Riot even said that publicly. Anybody with the smallest semblance of common sense would understand that because projects for League take so long, I mean, just look at some. We won't see the effects of this so-called biggest budget ever until a couple years down the line. And while that stings, it doesn't as much as last time, because just like Season 4, the drought of content was to make way for massive changes at the end of the year. Mythic items being removed, new items put in their place, monumental terrain changes, and VOID MONSTERS! VOID MONSTERS EVERYWHERE! Updated Baron, Herald, Voidified Red, Blue, and, Brav, Brav. and brand new Void Grubs canonically named J. Jonah and Jameson. Don't look it up, believe me. It's real. The Cho'Gath VGU is finally happening. Kog'Maw will finally exist in the lore. And that Kai'Sa splash update will actually mean something. The Void Event! The Void Event is real! It really is impressive that it could be name dropped in a preseason dev blog yet still not be in the League Partner Program. It should be noted that there were also a few mid-scopes released this year, but for the sake of redundancy, I'm probably not going to talk about them. Two of them already had dedicated segments in previous rewinds, and as for the others, we'll go over them once we get around to the Season 9 retrospective. With that in mind, let's dive right in. These are the champions of Season 2023. Rallion Soul. Reworked February 7th, 2023. Damage type AP. Role mid laner, control mage, celestial jackass. What killed the dinosaurs? A giant goddamn rock, baby! Yeah, that. That's, that's not the right music. You put on the wrong music. I did mention earlier how I wouldn't be giving any of the mid-scopes their own dedicated segment, seeing as they already do or will have one in a separate rewind. However, I couldn't just skip over Lauren Solio. Despite my adoration for the full VGUs, Aurelian Soul's rework had me hyped more than most. Visually, he would be the exact same champion, but would play completely differently. Ironically, almost exactly the opposite. The CGU took what was once one of the most mechanically challenging, difficult to master champions in the entire game, and devolved his entire play pattern down to
I for one have never been an advocate of these style of reworks, while the end result is always better than what came before, the identity of the old champion is lost forever. We'll probably never see a gameplay pattern like all the Rellians orbiting stars exist in League ever again. But here's the thing, while I mourn the loss of the skill expressive dragon of the past and feel the pain of the OG Aurelian Soul players for losing it, I'm, grief, he's naked. I'm sorry, he's too much fun. You gotta understand, I'm bad. Oh. Like, really oh. bad at League of Legends. I find infinitely more enjoyment out of running around the rift like a jackass playing Blitzcrank than pressing 3000 buttons per minute on a collie. I do not enjoy playing mechanically complex champions, but I do like dragons. So much so I willingly put myself through the ringer, got Mastery 7 on Aurelian well before his CGU because I found the character so goddamn cool. But oh the misery. Getting that Mastery 7 was one of the most depressing, grueling experiences I've ever had the displeasure of playing in League of Legends. Out of all the champions in League, he easily ranked at number one for the champion I loved everything about but could not stand playing them. So along comes the CGU and fixes everything. I mean, you know how his fly move used to get stopped by anything and everything? Yeah, hope he got anti-aircraft missiles now. That dragon ain't slowing down for nobody. They fly now! He's just so simple now. So easy to understand and enjoy. This isn't to say simple characters are always a slam dunk. Yumi and Trundle are textbook examples of that. But you know what A-Soul does that they don't? Look absolutely f***ing awesome. Flying around, spitting hot fire, placing black holes, growing more and more powerful as the game goes on, throwing literal meteors at the map so powerful it makes the entire screen shake. Simple, yet satisfying. It's exactly what I would have wanted. He's finally the cosmic space dragon he was always supposed to be. I know that's kind of an unpopular opinion at this point, both from the OG Aurelian Soul players missing their old playstyle and for the non-Aurelian Soul players salty about dying to my renowned mechanical prowess. Regardless, I love the A-Soul rework and I'm very excited to see the next CGU Wright has in store, which is... Yeah, a year later, we still don't know. Ideally, Alawi or Yorick would be the next in line, but when does Riot ever remember those characters even exist? You know what Champion Riot could never forget about, though? The one launched right alongside Aurelian Soul on the exact same day. Ari. Remastered February 7th, 2023. Damage type AP. Roll mid laner, mage, faker's X world skin choice. What are you, some kind of furry? Riot originally planned a continuous stream of new content at the start of the year. Specifically, Ari would release during the first patch of the new year with Aurelian Soul following two weeks later. The thing about plans, though, they change. <laughs> No setbacks, everything's fine here, just fine. Unwilling to delay Aurelian as well, Riot launched both long-awaited releases on the exact same day, and let me just say, never in a million years would I think Ari of all champions would get overshadowed by anyone, never mind a champion who previously held the record for one of the lowest pick rates in the game. I suppose that's because Riot didn't want to delay her any longer, just like Asol she was supposed to release last year, but Ari does have a lot of skin, so it wasn't exactly a task the designers could quickly do in between other projects. Yeah, we'll get to that later. But also because there was a considerable gap between ASU releases. Caitlyn all the way back in fall of 2021, Ari releasing a bit over a year later, and still no concrete release date for Teemo or Lee Sin. That's not good enough! By the time each ASU releases, five more champions have become outdated in their place. Even staples like Yasuo or Jinx are beginning to show their age. The problem is, I don't think this pace is going to improve. Riot has said on record that not only do ASUs take considerably more time to make than just building a new champion from scratch, but that when they do them, it will only be for the most popular champions that already have a ton of skins. It's probably why the one after Teemo is gonna be Lux. It's not to say Caitlyn, Ari, Teemo, or Lee Sin weren't in need of a glow up, they certainly certainly were, but Riot also stated a reason they don't do these ASUs very often is because they don't substantially increase the champion's play rate. There's a simple reason to that I don't think Riot's seeing. Ari players, same with a lot of popular champion mains, are a lot like Pokemon fans. 
It doesn't matter what kind of clunky, janky schlock is crapped out because they're going to buy it anyway. Ari's model looked like garbage, but in spite of that, KDA was going to sell gangbusters no matter what because it was a skin for Ari. Of course, these champions were in desperate need of a glow up, but hyper focusing on only the most popular champions that already sell skins without an ASU not only hurts the development time, but hurts the champions who could become popular if they got one. You think Song of Nunu would have ever been made using the old design? I know these projects are a hassle, and I'm not asking for some massive team to crank out an ASU every week, but instead, I think Riot should return to their old ways, many smaller teams each working on long-term projects. That way, they all have ample time to work on them, but there was always a continuous stream of champion updates. Ideally, we get one once every two months or so. It would still take ages for the entirety of the League roster to be up to date in this way, but it's a far better prospect than Rumble, Corky, or Cho'Gath still looking the way they do by 2030. Hey, so, um, question. What's your question, soldier? Well, this part of the video was supposed to be about Ari, yet the whole segment was you whinging and complaining about Riot's time management skills. How come you didn't do the spiel for Caitlyn a couple years back? I mean, for a section about Ari, you barely mentioned her at all. What's the big deal? Do you not like the ASU or something? Do you just not like Ari in general? Was the gameplay so stale you couldn't think of anything to say about her? What is it? Oh, it's nothing like that. I would have rathered it was the Ruin King design, but the ASU is just fine. Originally, I wasn't even gonna give her a segment in this video just like I did with Caitlyn back in 2021. But then I got to thinking, man, this video will probably do a lot better if Ari's in the thumbnail. Emilio. Released March 22nd, 2023. Damage type, AP. Roll, Support, Enchanter, Slime Rancher. <laughs> Not counting any of the casual reviews, Melia was the only champion released this year I made a dedicated video on. Granted, that video was my base initial thoughts on the champion as I managed to squeeze it out only a couple days after his reveal. So now that he's been out for a decent length of time, his kit released, the lore updated, how do I feel about our first ever male enchanter? It's alright! It's okay! I second male enchanter. You fellas already know I despise this role. Besides a few key outliers, I'd sooner brush my teeth with a porcupine than play this loathsome class of champions. League of Legends is an action game. I want a piece of that action. And if I'm forced to play a support, then you can guarantee I'm playing something hyper aggressive. Melio, by all definition, is the opposite of aggressive. He has a single damaging, slowish ability mainly used to keep opponents away, two almost entirely defensive utility spells, and an ult that essentially boils down to. At the very least, I can say for Melio's gameplay, the football move is pretty fun. It even does some pretty chunky damage when going full AP. But honestly, a single fun move on a champion for a class I viscerally hate playing is not enough to get me invested. His lore, though? It is glorious! I think we forget just how long Ishtal has been left to rot. After Kiana's release and several other champions being shoehorned into it, I just decided... That's good enough! Which sucks because Riot had plenty of opportunities where they could have expanded upon it, including the book! Melio finally explored this long-forgotten region, and not just because he has connections to pretty much all the Ishtali champions, but the elemental axioms were explored and expanded, having him discover the new side of fire, the soothing fire, used to heal instead of burn. A neat idea considering we definitely needed a way to differentiate him from the other fire-themed child champion. Overall, Melio is safe. No really insane mechanics, no major significance to the wider world of Runeterra, not even any real big promotion besides the fact that once again, a champion in League of Legends and an agent in Valorant with two very similar themes launched at the exact same time with no underlying reason behind it. I mean, at least Gex is pretty goddamn cool. If this weren't a video game, I'd be on my way to prison! It's hard to be disappointed with Melio, because besides being our first Ishtal champion in three and a half years, there weren't really any kind of expectations for what he could be. Something the next champion release was the polar opposite of. Fury. Release July 20th, 2023. Damage type AD. Roll. What the dog do? Don't you dare finish that sentence. Don't do it. 
I'm sick of it. Who's that good girl? Oh yeah, who's that good girl? Who killed that ADC in two nanoseconds? You did, yes you did. You're such a good girl, yes you are, yes you are. The Fury was a pretty significant event. The first monster champion since Orn, the first creature champion since Yumi, the first Darken since Ross, and our fourth dog champion alongside Nazis, Warwick, and Yasuo. I bet you I'm better than 99% of you. <laughs> but fun fact, Rost and Kane released before the Darken retcon when they were still aliens. As such, Nefiri is the first real Darken post-update, not counting the 50,000 ones we got from Legend of Ruterra. <laughs> there was so much hype for this champion release, all this build-up, promotional events, promotional materials, concluding with a massive cinematic reveal trailer, finally revealing her in full, and she's... I don't know. The big reason I didn't finish the Nefiri video is because I was waiting for her color story to fill in the gaps. Her bio was essentially just a retelling of her cinematic and left way too many open questions. But alas, Nefiri was the first champion release since Camille to launch without a color story. So all the lore we had for her was her bio, which was riddled with lore inconsistencies. As before, it was rewritten later on to fix them. It explained the reason why her mind was split between a pack of dune hounds is because they ripped the dark and dagger to pieces. Huh? How? How? I don't know. The whole point of the darkened weapons is that they're supposed to be indestructible. Even the Celestials can't destroy them, but you're telling me a pack of random dogs can? That coupled with her motivation to unify the darkened via assimilation and take over the entire world is the exact same motivation as Zelani. So what gives? All these lore inconsistencies, weird design choices, it's almost like Riot didn't even want to make a darken in the first place and you would be correct sir look at all that concept art it's clear as day that the dog idea is what came first and i'm not upset that she's a dog creature in fact there's a lot of things i really like about her design it's just upsetting that our first darken in nearly eight years is just some random dog thing meandering about the desert with no direction and a motivation yoinked from a far more interesting character her gameplay though is pretty fun and at least here it feels like she had a clear vision for what she wanted to be the assassin for babies no, no, the other one. No, no, the other one. I, I said babies, not serial murderers. Easy to land abilities, point and click gap closer, <laughs> dogs grabbing CS and body blocking for you. Got you homie. Nefiri was intentionally designed to be an assassin playable for anyone uh, and everyone. Uh, because of that easy to learn playstyle, Nefiri released strong. Way too strong. Even excelling in the top lane for a good while there before Riot swiftly made that obsolete. A familiar pattern of this year's champions where any kind of experimentation like Way support or a Rallying Soul jungle was quickly shot down or nerfed into the ground. Ah! Miss Potential is a good way to describe Nefiri, I think. She wasn't initially supposed to be a Darken, our first monster champion in seven years was just another basic animal, and she was placed in a role that doesn't really fit her thematically, but there is still a lot to like about her, and let us not forget the greatest contribution she ever made to Riot Games as a whole, Knife Pup. Mother, mother, we're gonna die. I don't wanna die, mother. Our master is Harpstack Emerald, mother. She wasn't what I was hoping she would be, but she did have some pretty hefty expectations that realistically, I as well as the monster enthusiast crowd probably set too high. Though I wouldn't say being disappointed like this equates to any kind of actual controversy. A lot of worse things have happened to newer champions that caused significantly more outrage. Uh, Wait, which champion released next? Briar. Briar. Released September 3rd, 2023. Damage type AD. Roll Jungler, Bruiser, Vampire. Hi. Just taking a little blood. We had known for a long time Riot August expressed interest in making a vampire lolly champion. And while making a champion child age isn't inherently a bad thing, I'm just saying, the last time Riot made a champion with the appearance of an underage girl, it didn't go very well. I mean, if we'll make money, sure. But it's not weird. You're weird, you sick fuck. But eventually, Riot August's OC Do Not Steal would finally hit the rift a bit early, because unfortunately, yeah, 
she was leaked. And controversy galore. The splash art shows her with childlike proportions and a child's face, yet she's supposed to be college age? What the fuck? For some reason, the only part of the splash art that's illuminated is her feet giving fuel to the foot freak's fire. The feet are the best Wait. part! And her thighs are illogically enormous because it made her look like an IV bag? <laughs> what? Right, next time just have the balls to say you gave your OC thick thighs just because you wanted to. I've done it. It's not that hard. We hadn't even seen her gameplay or in-game model and she'd already lit the internet on fire. A textbook example of why leaks are a bad thing. Because upon her actual official reveal, many of those issues were remedied. In games, she clearly did not look like a child, nor did she act or sound like one. She actually sounds eerily similar to a friend of mine. <laughs> you were becoming Briar. <laughs> she already is. And her gameplay, a champion who self-taunts themselves thematically, I think that's one of the coolest abilities in the game. Going from her normal human form to a blood-hungry frenzy, unable to resist the smell of blood or regain control until she's gotten the kill. Thematically, that's incredibly cool. Practicality-wise, though. Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing. No, <laughs> Briar, come on, you stupid champion. And this playstyle can get very repetitive. I know I said earlier how much I love the Relian Soul for its simplicity, but I did say simple doesn't always mean better. After a while, piloting a champion that essentially plays itself becomes very tedious. Press W, Q your target, let Briar play herself, press W again for healing, and maybe throw an E in there at the end. Congratulations, you have just discovered how Briar approaches every single situation. There is no variance, there is no combos, she just kind of does what she wants. Which again, Again, very thematically appropriate, but after a while, man, this champion becomes so stale to play. Thankfully, that's where her ult comes in. Men go in! Men! Vex ult on steroids. It's flashy, exhilarating, and most importantly, fun. Especially if you build full lethality. What? <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> I wasn't even aiming for him. Because <laughs> if there's a lethality Briar on the enemy team throwing at that ult, you're not paying attention and get hit by it. You're probably dead. Even that, though, has fallen off in favor. Once people learned the audio and visual cues, landing this blast and abilities become much more challenging, despite the generous hitbox. Huh? Briar's a bit of a mixed IV bag for me. There's lots of things I like about her and lots of things I don't, but certainly leagues above what I was expecting her to be. Mainly, I'm just happy at the end of the day she is a grown woman after all and didn't wind up being pedophile bait. Yeah, I said the word. You know exactly what champion we're talking about next. Remastered October 11th, 2023. Damage type, All of it. roll, top laner, bruiser, weapon master. Hey, sweetie, if you'll be my bride, I'll groom ya. That is good. Oh, it's good. It's not fair, man. Out of all the champions in League, why did it have to be Jax? Hello. Hey. Wait, I don't really feel comfortable with this champion being next to Jax right now. <laughs> it doesn't oh, seem like shit. a good idea. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! He's such a chill guy! Having drinks with Gragas, honorable duels with Fiora, fighting off evil monsters, winning fishing championships, being a positive role model to all those around him, he is a true hero! But then, the meme started. Not for lack of reasoning, like any champion meme, it was primarily built upon the foundation of its player base. For some reason, it just kept happening. High level Jax mains kept getting ousted as pedophiles to the point where now if you play Jax at all, you are called one. And that's... that's no fun. Being called a demon though? Yeah, that's completely justified. On the actual rework though, he looks amazing. I think we often forget he is one of the original 40 champions and his old model definitely reflected that. So along comes the VGU to bring him up to modern standards and base it off his excellent Legends of Runeterra incarnation. 
Or so we thought. You ever think it was weird that Riot insisted this was a visual update and not an ASU? That his fishing minigame had no animation? That even though it takes months for mid-scopes to release after their announcement, Jax is launched only a couple weeks later? It's because the long-thought lost mystery VGU announced two years ago that I thought was Cho'Gath was actually Jax. The complications in the workforce undoubtedly as the result of a certain virus stifled his production process, causing the LOR version to release first and his gameplay and visual updates to be released separately. And I wouldn't normally have a problem with that if Riot had tried to lie about it. Scarter's gameplay delay has left the art and narrative folks with a little extra time on their hands, so they decided to look to a familiar top laner who's in need of a glow up. No, 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 no. A real believable guys, even though it's said repeatedly that the reason why ASUs and VGUs take so long is because of skins. But sure, yeah, you had a little extra time to work on the champion tied for fifth place of having the most skins in the game. So it actually was the Legend of Runeterra version that was inspired by the League one, the opposite of what we initially assumed. Can you blame us though? All the LOR redesigns of the past couple years have been fantastic. And personally speaking, I actually think the League version is equally as cool. Just like LOR Udyr is him at the middle point of his journey, I like to imagine LOR Jax is him at the end. <laughs> the League version presents him in much baggier, nomadic clothes. A man who has lost everything to time, including his heritage and identity, wandering the world to find motivation for his cause and in search of himself. Whereas LOR's version presents him once he's fully regained his sense of self. With a crew at his side helping him armor up and his path lit forward filled with determination, he now embodies the spirit of the last Akathian ready to face down the void one last time. Some understandably like the LOR version more for these reasons, but I think they're both valid in their own right. They're certainly better than the version we got stuck with witnessing for the entirety of Worlds. Disgusting! Regardless of the complications, the update was still a rousing success in my eyes. One Wild Rift certainly won't see for some time. Hell, they don't even have Ari yet, and Asol still has his balls there. <laughs> Jax gives me hope we'll see more similarly LOR-inspired updates for champions like Nidalee, Zillion, or Master Yi in the future, but with the current state of how frequently ASUs are releasing, we probably won't see these guys for a long time. But you know what is much more frequent? Brand new. New Ionian champions in League of Legends, a lot like the final release of the season. Quay, released December 7th, 2023. Damage type AP. Roll mid laner, ink mage, Jin's biggest fan, mechanically complex? I find it quite simple. I don't believe it for a second. As far as mages go, the most mechanically intensive task they have is remembering to put Zhonya's on the right hotkey. Quay can't possibly be that difficult. What do his abilities do anyway? Quay's Q, W, and E spellbooks each have three abilities that are accessed by pressing two keys. QQ casts Devastating Fire. QW fiery is severing soars out in a line and explodes on the first or formation. Or Q Q Q this is a lot to digest, and we haven't even gotten to the rest of his kit. If Aphelios has 200 years of collective game design experience and Akshan is 10,000, 10, then what does that make our brand new Twink Mage? Honestly? I wouldn't even put him in that caliber. Is he weird? Sure. <laughs> a bit overwhelming? Absolutely. Completely broken? Debatable. Here's the thing about the 200 year champions. I think the big reason people despise them so much isn't because they have so many tools at their disposal, it's because they can waste all those tools and still find success. It's no coincidence nearly all the 200 year champions are AD, cause even if they mess up and miss every single ability they have, not only are their cooldowns low enough to counteract their mistakes, but they also have auto attacks to make up for them. And the AP 200 year champions like Silas and Zoe, look at that, same thing. Free damage even if they miss everything. Quay is not like these champions. You have 10 abilities, yes, but you have to pick and choose which one to use depending on the situation. Whichever one you choose, you are locked out of the rest of them for a considerable amount of time. And if you miss those crucial abilities, well, Oh no! You missed your crucial abilities and suffer as a result. Basically what I'm trying to get at here is it doesn't really matter how many crazy tools or abilities they gave him because at the end of the day, he is still a slow immobile mage. Wait, I can bait her. Okay. She wants the kill. Okay. Bye. Come on. You want a piece of this? That's what I thought, bitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I really like that. He feels like an actually complex champion that requires split second decision making and can be royally punished for making the wrong decision. For our first artillery mage in almost a decade, yes, it has been that long since Velkaz came out. I think gameplay wise, Hui is an absolute triumph. Even if apparently he's just a straight rip off of a Dota 2 character. Shocking by the way, Riot has never done that before. Time will tell whether or not that opinion changes. I originally loved Cassante until I had to start fighting people who knew how to actually play him. But despite being yet another Ionian champion to reach with way too many characters already, mind you, and a kit completely in contrast to the skill level I usually enjoy playing at, let's just say there's a reason one of the already existing best champions in the game is so fond of him. I think Quag is a fantastic addition to League of Legends, and what a way to close out the season. Well, there you have it. Seven total champions this year, and man, I'm liking this trend. Riot seems to have finally gotten themselves out of the rut they were stuck in for so long, finally giving us more unique body types, creatures, forgotten regions and playstyles than ever before. So let's take one last look back, shall we, and pay our respects to the Season 2023 roster. The Cosmic Douchebag, the KDA Advertisement, the Campfire Connoisseur, the Dark and Dagger Dog, the Nimona Cosplayer, the Lethal Lamp Bearer, and the Average Tumblr Artist. But as always, those are just my silly, stupid opinions. Be sure to let me know yours down in the comments. Which champions do you love from this year? Which champions do you hate? And maybe what you're looking forward to next year? Lee Sin and Teemo's ASUs are well underway. Skarner's BGU is right on the horizon. Our first Freljordian champion in seven years. Ambessa Madarda, with all her Noxian might, is coming to the rift at the end of the year. And of course, our newest champion was revealed while I was editing this video. <laughs> uh... Is that... Is that a f***ing Skylander? Regardless, thank you fellas so much for watching this video, and hey, if you liked it, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon page. Not only does it grant you sneak peeks at videos and access to a thriving academic institution, but your support directly goes towards funding these videos, being commissioning artists for amazing artwork, or hiring additional editing help. But with all the shilling out of the way, thank you fellas so much for a wonderful year, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.